Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to talk about the base curve and the shadows and highlights module. Cameras store images in linear RGB. That's why the photos look dull and flat as you can see in this one. When you create a JPEG photo using the manufacturer software or in camera, if you're shooting in uh, RAW plus JPEG or only JPEG, a base curve is applied to the image to take to reduce the dullness and the flatness and this base curve is camera and manufacturer dependent you can emulate that effect using the base curve module you can find a list of um, popular uh, manufacturers and camera models to apply or you can import and set up your own preset as well. Depending on the settings that you've chosen, base curve could be applied automatically to all images according to their EXIF data. So that dark table will choose the best base curve to your image based on the EXIF data, so on the manufacturer and model of the camera. We discussed dark table preferences in a previous video, which you can find in the playlist. The curve is uh, made with uh, several nodes, and you can edit the curve by clicking on the nodes and moving them around. Using the left mouse button, if you click somewhere where there are no nodes, you create a new one. If you want to create a new uh, node without affecting the curve, then you use Control click The scale drop box gives you the option of using linear or logarithmic space. In logarithmic space, there is, there is more space in the shadows or in the lower region which gives you more yeah as you can see here you get more op more space to actually work in the uh, with the shadows and brighten them or change the contrast in them and the linear scale has equal weight on all regions. Logarithmic, you can see here the shadows which are the left part of the curve have a lot more space to work in than the highlights or the midtones for that matter. Next we have the preserve colors drop down menu which as it says is you, lets you select the method which is used to preserve the colors in the images while applying the base curve. It goes from none, linear, maximum RGB, average RGB, actually this is completely missed in the online user manual for, for Darktable. So I couldn't find much information about what all of those methods are or how they calculate and preserve the colors. However, for our purposes, we don't really have to know how they work behind the scenes. But if you're not happy with how the colors are portrayed after using base curve, then you can change the method here and try to find one that works best. By playing around with it, I found out that actually none produces the most vibrant colors. Next we have fusion, which actually refers to exposure fusion. Exposure fusion refers to the method of combining multiple exposures of the same image 
usually you can do that by using exposure bracketing in your uh, camera to produce an HDR image. So the fusion drop-down box and the base curve allows you to emulate the HDR effect by fusing multiple images created from the same one with different exposure values. Let's put it on. You have two options, two exposures or three exposures. Let's look at three exposures. First you have the exposure shift, which is the difference between each version of the image it's using. So the first one is what we have, and then the other one is exposed plus one EV, and the third one is plus two EV, because it's an extra one over the second one. You can define how the images will be created and what the difference is using those two sliders. So the exposure shift is the difference between each image and the next one. And the exposure bias determines whether you're going to merge the image with overexposed or with underexposed images, or well, versions, with underexposed versions of itself. Now we have it on one. So the basic image or the base image that we had is merged with two extra versions that are overexposed. One is overexposed uh, with plus one EV and the second one is overexposed with plus two EV. The effect since the image already was a little bit flat is that it's now quite flat. But you can see the effect in the histogram as well shift the histogram widely to the right. Now if we move it back to zero, the image, base image, will be fused with one underexposed and one overexposed version of itself. So the actual dynamic range will be preserved. And if we push it to minus one, the image is then fused with two underexposed versions of itself. Again, you can see the effect directly in the histogram. The whole histogram is pushed to the left. While the base curve could be a quick way to introduce some um, contrast into the image and for quick editing, if you're going to use other methods like the tone curve or similar modules, then it is recommended that you disable the base curve first and keep on working in linear RGB. Next, let's talk a bit about the shadows and highlights module. The shadows and highlights module is not enabled by default. You do not see it in the, base, the basic group. But if we go into more modules, Scroll down to the S. You can see the Shadows and Highlights module here. If you click once on it, it is enabled and you can see it here. If you click a second time, you favor it and it's in the Favorites tab. And another time, you disable it again. So we'll just enable it. And now we can see it here in the basic group. We can use this module to make adjustments in the tonal ranges of the lighter dark, lighter parts of the image, so the highlights, and the darker parts of the image, the shadows. By doing that, we can recover some details in those two areas by increasing local contrast. The shadows slider works on the darker part of the image. A positive value lightens the shadows, negative value darkens it. The same applies to the highlights slider, which works on the lighter part of the image negative values darkens the highlight 
and positive values brightens them. It doesn't have much effect on this image. As you can see, this image is underexposed. So there aren't any highlights to play around with. If I fixed that using the exposure module, then this highlight slider would have an effect. Let's do that. As you can see, now that we do have a highlight part of this in this image, then the highlight slider affects them. Cranking up the shadows and the highlights will produce artifacts in your image. These are best used with moderate values to add a subtle effect of local contrast in the highlights and the shadows of your image. Next we have the white point adjustment slider. This one allows you to select where the white point cutoff is as by default the uh, shadows and highlights module does not touch the darkest and so the black points in the image and the white points white points where the luminance is 100 but if you had overexposed in uh, parts of the image and you want to try to bring back some highlights in them you can do that by using uh, the white point adjustment slider to allow shadows and highlights module to bring those down as well. Next we have the soften with drop down menu and the options are Gaussian and bilateral filter. The default is Gaussian it produces the best results and less artifacts so I'd keep it on that. Next you have the radius of the softening filter. Higher values produce a software transition so less artifacts, but they might produce halos. Let's try that. Well, actually, not a lot of halos in this case. And lower values would produce more artifacts, but less halos. The effect is more prominent if you're using a bilateral filter. Again, not much in this image in particular. I would stick to Gaussian and the default unless you actually start seeing halos or artifacts in the image. Then you can try to fix them using the radius slider. We already said that uh, the shadows and highlights module works on the dark and bright areas of your image, so the shadows and highlight. But the transition is not abrupt. It's, com it's controlled with the, by the compress slider. So higher values here compresses the effect to only the highlights and the shadows. The higher the value that you choose, the lower or the smaller the area that's affected by the, uh, by the module. If you pull it completely to 100, then there's actually no effect anymore as uh, the, the, the area is uh, limited to the black and white parts of your image. The default is 50, 50%. You normally don't have to touch it unless you want to limit the effect more to the highlights and shadows so you crank it up if you want to do that I don't see much benefit in lowering the value if you take it all the way to zero then you're actually affecting the whole image somewhere in the middle will affect the midtones more the higher the value is the less your the less midtones you are changing Next, we have the shadows color adjustment and the highlights color adjustment. These control how much saturation is added to the recovered areas. 
by default the shadows color adjustment is at 100 which enhances the saturation of the uh, dark areas of the image that are brightened up while the highlights is only at 50 that's because usually highlights don't include a lot of color information so pu putting it on a higher value might produce unrealistic results however the best way is to play around with it and see what you like it's usually safe to leave the shadows at 100 it never produces really any horrible results as the shadows do have some color information in them but you can play around with the highlights to see what you like and what really fits the image that you're working on well that should do it for today I hope that you found it interesting and entertaining if you have any corrections or suggestions please leave them in the comments below and until next time bye bye